Gnome Web is actually good now, is what I would believe if the Gnome team didn't say that every single time that there was an update to this web browser in the last three years. But recently, Gnome Web, also known as Epiphany, has received hardware acceleration thanks to GDK4 and has many more features in the works, such as extension support. So maybe, finally, we can have a web browser that at least will work well as an alternative to Firefox and Google Chrome. But you know what isn't an alternative to Firefox and Chrome? That's right, our sponsor. FlexiSpot in their E7 desk. I have been using FlexiSpot as my standing desk for some time now, particularly the E9, which that one's awesome. I recently switched out my tabletop for an 80 inch and it was really easy just to take those legs off, stretch it out, pop it on, good to go. The desks feature a dual motor, easy to use touchpad that allows you to raise, lower the desk, there's a locking mechanism, and there's presets for standing and sitting. Has a little USB so you can plug things in there. Real nice. When you first buy it, setting it up and installing it's really easy. It's only a couple parts you gotta put together. The E5 desk can support up to 220 pounds of weight while the E7 supports up to 355 pounds. The stability's perfect. If I shake the desk around, bang on it, it's not gonna be wobbling around everywhere. Overall, I have been super pleased, super impressed, and if you check the link down below, they are going to be running a sale. So you can go ahead and save yourself a little bit of money. So again, big thank you to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. So first, where did GNOME Web come from? Well, back in the day, talking the year about 2000 or so, web browsers were used as multifunctional programs and did many things all in one, even beyond the scope of what they do today. Web browsers then were just kind of weird. For example, before Firefox, you'd have the Mozilla application suite, which included a web browser, email client, and IRC. This made browsers, especially for the time, rather bloated. As a result, GNOME developed Galleon. This was designed to be one thing and one thing only, and that is a basic web browser. And at the time, it was actually pretty popular due to its speed and flexibility, and the fact that it used Mozilla's Gecko engine. However, only a couple years later, GNOME would start adopting its new design guidelines, which was supposed to make things simpler to develop and use by dumbing down the UI and removing extra preferences. Many power users didn't like this, and it actually resulted in the creator of Galleon forking his own project to create Epiphany, which followed those GNOME guidelines. However, while Gecko was great, Mozilla viewed it as a Firefox component completely ignoring other projects. This made developing with the Gecko engine rather difficult, so then they would begin transitioning development using the WebKit engine, the same engine that powers the Safari web browser today, with version 2.28 of Epiphany completing this transition. There'd be many bug fix updates as well as the 3.0 release, which upgraded it from GTK2 to GTK3. And then the 3.0 release, which renamed it from Epiphany to Gnome Web. 3.10 would add the header bar, which brought it up to date with standard Gnome design. And every other update going forward would be relatively minor until recently. Outside of a few major releases, it was mainly in maintenance mode with Chromium and Firefox getting major updates very often, which in comparison to those browsers, it was often painful to use because it couldn't run your favorite browser extensions, didn't support hardware acceleration, which made it rather sluggish. For example, in a recent version of GNOME Web, I could barely load some of the YouTube videos I was trying to watch. However, GNOME Web development has been booming as of recently with many new game-changing features in the works. And by game-changing, I don't really mean like against other web browsers, it's just kind of putting it up with them a little bit more. All of the last seven major releases have had major improvements to GNOME Web. In GNOME 3.36, it added mobile support. 3.38 added intelligent tracking protection. GNOME 40 included the redesigned tab bar. 41 added improved to dark mode and better handling of unresponsive websites. 42 finally added hardware acceleration, making scrolling an actually smooth experience. 43 revitalized how web apps work in GNOME Web, which leads us to the latest release of GNOME 44. And that would be the port to GTK4 and Libueta, as well as major preference enhancements within web. So is GNOME Web actually good now? Well, for now, the answer is no. So let's go over the update of uh, Libueta and GNOME Web. This brings the new GNOME theme to the app, but I couldn't really notice any other changes outside of the theme. 
I did notice some widget changes in the GTK Expector, like the ADW tab bar now being used for tabs, although I am disappointed that GNOME Web isn't using the new tab overview widget that Liveweight had just added recently in 1.3, which also came out around the same time, so maybe it will show up in the next release. It's also using the Liveweight settings page, but the differences between the GNOME Web in 43 and 44 is uh, rather minor. Outside of the UI, there have been some substantial improvements within the performance. Thanks to patches added upstream to WebKit as well as the port to GTK4. Just general web browsing on GNOME Web in 44 is so much faster and get this, you can actually open YouTube videos now. However, this still isn't the fastest experience in the world. Just for shits and giggles, I've been running GNOME Web as a general web browser for the last few weeks and it has been running decently fast. Although again, not as fast as Firefox and Chromium. I've been able to browse general articles for scripts, browse general social media sites like Twitter, and using things like Google Docs for school has not really been an issue at all. But I still do notice some stability issues, especially on YouTube specifically, when I frequently find myself needing to close and reopen the browser because something just froze. I think the biggest cause of this is WebKit. For those who don't know, WebKit is an engine GNOME Web uses, and WebKit actually originates from KHTML, which was a KDE project. Apple later forked WebKit for its Safari browser, and then Google actually forked it into Blink for Chrome which this technically makes GNOME Web the closest thing we have to Safari for Linux, which may be where they got some of the design inspiration from. Anyhow, not only does GNOME Web feel a lot slower than Chromium and Firefox, but it also falls behind on things like HTML5 tests where GNOME Web scores a 454, while Firefox and Chromium score a 515 and 526 respectively. To be fair, WebKit does block some HTML elements that are likely unnoticeable for a user in order to prevent fingerprinting, but WebKit is also known for being the main annoyance for web developers after the death of Internet Explorer, with web developers often needing to make significant changes in their code that target Safari and WebKit specifically. And honestly, I don't think most of these devs would actually target WebKit at all if it weren't for the fact that it is the only web browser allowed on iOS, at least for now. So at least for now, I'm not really going to be daily driving GNOME Web. I can't wait for the day that I could use just the integrated GNOME Web browser. It's going to be super cool. But I do think the future and what they have planning and some of the test features that are available make just the future bright. I'm not really a fan of how Google essentially controls the entire web browser market <laughs> with its dominance of Chromium-based web browsers. We actually have a whole separate video on that worth checking out, click the I, wherever it is. And while WebKit is still far behind Blink and Gecko, I think web could ultimately be a really good alternative to something like Chromium, especially if they continue development and if uh, Firefox keeps making interesting decisions. Now, other than just the general stability performance of it, it's incredibly basic as a web browser. And the one thing it's been missing forever that is kind of needed is browser extensions. And they are working on that and that is going to be coming soon. And we can actually go ahead and test this functionality and capability. Note that this is like beta alpha. It's not ready for actual daily use. It is technically an experimental feature right now. It's unstable, doesn't work all the time, but it is being worked on and that's what's important. You can actually enable this functionality within the terminal with a couple commands or by enabling a G setting within the dconf editor. And then you could go to the Firefox web store, manually download extensions and then try them out within GNOME web. Again, highly experimental. A lot of things probably aren't gonna work properly as of yet, but the progress they've made still gets me excited. So while it's not really technically a good web browser as of yet, compared to some of the other ones, and even compared to the uh, KDE web browser, KDE makes a lot of wonderful applications. Krita, Kden Live, bunch of stuff. The web browser is not one of them. <laughs> I do think GNOME Web could be a real option in the next two or three releases or so. And we should be paying real close attention to those updates, but until then, yeah, it's not a good web browser yet. <laughs> and probably one of the best places to learn about the actual update progress and see when new releases of these types of things drop is probably the Tech Hut newsletter 
If you go over to techcut.tv, there's a little subscribe button, click that, throw your email in, and you will get a weekly newsletter rounding up some of the good old tech and Linux news. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day, and goodbye.